Good morning, everyone. Patrick Russell here, class of 89, Blue Jay. And this is episode nine of the We Want More podcast. <laughs> Shown any adverse effects. Harrison with it. Big shot. Scores! Kyle Harrison goes high. That's it. It's over. John Hawkins has won his ninth national championship. Good morning, Blue Jay fans. Today we're doing the podcast a little differently. Co- Coach Milliman is out. Today we're excited to have the offensive and defensive coordinators, respectively, John Crawley and Jameson Kester. Men, good morning. Morning, Mr. Russell. Please don't call me Mr. Russell. Daddy. Daddy. I've said that a thousand times. Um, This is episode nine of the We Want More podcast. A lot of great nines out there for me, Brian Bacola, Craig Bouvier, the great Bob DeSimone. Uh, You guys have any nines that you remember, or am I putting you on the spot? Brendan Grimes. Brendan Grimes. Paul Rabel. Paul Rabel. Who's Matt Paul Rakowski? Right? Yeah. Oh, Matt, Matt Rakowski. So, fellas, thank you for joining us. We wanted to change it up a little bit, um, have the two assistants talk a little bit about the Rutgers game. Happened last Sunday at Rutgers. Little preview of the Michigan game. And, of course, some fun questions. So, from the perspective of the Rutgers game, we'll start with you, John. Thoughts on the game at Rutgers? From first quarter to fourth, how do you think the offense played? Give us uh, a quick summary of your thoughts. Sure. Yeah. Um, I thought we got off to a hot start in the first quarter. thought we uh, were playing fast, thought we were dodging hard. Um, you know, I specifically remember uh, Grimes kind of like working to get to the front of the net. Um, I thought that that was a really good start. Um, in the second quarter, uh, you know, kind of at the end of it, they started to go into some more zone, throw some different stuff at us. Um, and I thought it took us a little bit to get kind of used to that, uh, to kind of feel it out. Um, and you know, in the third quarter really only had five possessions. So, um, combination of them playing a little bit differently, um, seeing something a little bit different for our guys uh, and not really having a ton of the, you know, a ton of possessions to kind of get a feel for it. Um, I thought it kind of threw a wrench into things and it, 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 it frustrated our guys a little bit and, um, and slowed us down. Um, so I thought they did a great job. Credit to credit to Rutgers and, and, and those guys to do that. Um, and then I felt like in the fourth quarter, um, got the ball a couple more times, started to figure it out and, and uh, felt like we finished the game strong. Uh, but it, it, in, in, in its entirety, obviously, I thought it was a good game, good effort. Thought we got good efforts from kind of like the entire group, um, the entire attack group for sure, and 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 both midfields. Yeah, yeah. And Jacob uh, Angelus Angel uh, had a great game, but you you have to be pleased that the offensive offense is sort of spread out. You know, there's sort of a different initiator score each game. You know, yeah, it's not really, we're not relying on one or two guys to sort of carry the load. Yeah, you know, we want to we want to play by committee. Um, it's not about one guy. Um, it's not about two guys. It's kind of about the entire group kind of playing together. And some days it's one guy, some days it's another. And, you know, honestly, while while Angel did have, you know, he has eight points. A lot of them were really quiet ones. You know, he had a couple uh, empty nets, had a hidden ball trick that, that ends up in a goal. Um, you know, Garrett Degnan and Russell Melendez honestly probably scored his two biggest goals of the season um, at a certain point. And, you know, I think it for them as a group, I thought it was a good, it was a good effort. Um, and, you know, that's something that we try to prioritize is making sure that it's, it's never about one guy. Um, it's about the group as a, as a whole. Um, right. I thought that they did a good job of that. Yeah. Coach Kester, the defensive side, uh, great game by Chase. He, he settled in, made some great saves. Uh, really impressed with Quentin Kilrain, you know, as a freshman in a world of, you know, fifth years and grad students, it's really nice to see freshmen step up. Give us your perspective on how we performed against Rutgers defensively. Yeah. I mean, just quickly from a team standpoint, I think that uh, anytime you can win is a good thing. Anytime you can win as you approach April is even better. And then I think winning on the road, especially in the conference is just kind of like the creme de la creme. That, That is not an easy place to play and it's not an easy place to win i i have never won there at any place that i've that i've coached and certainly in my time here um so we were we were thrilled and pleased with that you know first and foremost i think defensively um 
our start was kind of the opposite of the offense. I think it was like 3-2, 2-2 two, two, two at some point. It just felt like everybody was scoring every time they had the ball, which is great for our offense. But for our defense, I would definitely like to get out to a little bit of a quicker start. And then I think towards uh, the back end of the first quarter and before halftime, we, um, with the exception of transition, where we were giving up some shots, we kind of held on to some deeper shots. I think a lot of their um, opportunities came from like 12 and outside. Um, and when you have Chase in the goal, those are the types of shots that you want him to see. And he does right. a great job of stealing a couple ones, but he also makes a lot of the routine saves. And by that, it's uh, a clean save, no rebounds, et cetera. And, um, when he starts seeing the ball like that, I think it allows the six guys in front of him to play a little bit differently. And I think that's what you kind of saw throughout the course of the game. Guys like Quentin uh, settled in. I think our short sticks have really been fantastic all year, but guys like Brett Martin um, and Hunter Jaronski and now Brendan Avila in a transfer. Those guys are a lot, yeah, a lot to play with a little bit more freedom and challenge the ball. They're not afraid to play above or behind the goal, um, which definitely allows us uh, some versatility in what we're doing. And then I thought Scott Smith probably had one of his best games of the year. It's something that kind of goes unnoticed, right. caused turnovers, ground balls. Um, he covered their best player, Ross Scott, held him to two shots and, and no goals which is just, you're not going to get that a lot from a kid like Ross Scott. So it, it's definitely a team effort, but Scotty kind of shouldered a lot of that load. And I think that right. the slow start kind of allowed us to wake up a little bit and and project into like, uh, you know, the end of the second quarter. And then certainly into the second half when, you know, the offense starts settling in long possessions, generating good opportunities, shot clock resets and scoring um, kind of all those things come together and allows us to find a rhythm as a team. Right, right, yeah. right. So a question a lot of people ask, since you're both here, you know, does an offensive groove help the defense and do consecutive defensive stops give a groove to the offense, if that makes sense? Yeah, I would I would say, of course, that it that makes sense. A, a lot of it's predicated off the faceoffs because if we're if we're scoring every time we have the ball, but we're losing faceoffs and we have to play defense, it almost neg negates some of that momentum. Right. Um, and it would be the same thing as if we're making stops defensively, but we're still losing faceoffs. We're not generating enough opportunities for the offense. So, although I think like we definitely feed off of each other on both ends, uh, we need to get possession in between those goals, regardless right. of who's scoring. Right, right, right. And that'll be a challenge, I think, you know, coming up with Michigan because they're very strong at the X. So, John, I jokingly but seriously said to Coach Milliman in a previous podcast, you know, we're a scientific university. We're, we're, we're nerds, you know, with, with pride. Uh, we're technical. As an older alum, we always talked about the north-south sort of vision of offense, right? You know, guy up top goes down the alley, maybe doesn't have it, goes to X. You know, we look at the weak side, blah, blah, blah. So tell us kind of the mindset of how the offense works today at Hopkins. Like, what are you looking for? And, and obviously you scout for every game differently, but just tell us a little bit about how, how offense has evolved in this day and age. Yeah, I think um, – I don't think that, like, the old school of North-South is completely out of the picture. Um, and I don't think, like, the kind of new school East-West is, like, the only thing either. Um, the way that we want to play is we want to give a bunch of freedom to move off the ball and and and, and dodge hard, create advantages um, as, as best we can. Um, at the end of the day, like, to me, every possession is like, all right, there's a problem at hand. We have a ball – there's a goal. We got six guys. They've got seven. We got to put this ball in the back of the net however we can. And and to me, um, it's how many guys can you get involved to do that and how much space can you use um, as that's happening, right? So, like, we don't want to play in one area of the field. Um, you know, we don't want to only play on the right wing, for example. We don't want to right. only play on the left wing. We don't want to only play behind the goal. Um, we want to get guys moving all over uh, the set. Um, and I think when you start to get guys moving, so like a Garrett Degnan, for example, um, if everybody knows he's only on the left wing for an entire possession, um, I think that that's basically limiting, um, a limiting him to make an impact in different ways and B making it easy for the defender who's covering him that week, um, to know where he's going to be. Um, I, you know, playing with uh, a guy like Ryan Brown, um, taught me like if, if he had to play off ball only on the crease, like it's a little bit easier to find him, but if he has to play throughout the entire box and he's dodging on one wing, he's dodging on the other wing, he's going from up top, he's going from behind, he's playing with the ball, he's playing without the ball. Um, it makes it, you know, it makes it a lot harder to cover him. So um, I guess the best way that, that that I like to describe it is, is I want guys kind of moving all throughout the set. I want them moving from one side to the other, up top to behind. 
Um, I want to be working to create create advantages um, in all parts of the field, um, the right. left wing, the right wing, up top, behind the goal. Um, and I think that the more that you kind of teach the guys how to how to have that freedom and 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 where to pick their times and 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 where to kind of change their spots and and how to do that, um, it kind of gets their creative juices flowing. And then and then at the end of the day, it's them doing it. Um, like right. you know, try to as best I can give a give a little bit of a framework. Um, but more than anything, I want to give them ownership over over what they're seeing from their defender. Maybe they haven't right. gotten to the other side of the field often, and maybe we, they have to kind of put themselves over there, um, whether it be via picks, via dodging, via screening, via cutting, whatever it may be. Um, but just diversifying, using the whole space, um, getting guys to play with some freedom. And and, and at the end of the day, um, read what the defense has given them and 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 try to make the best opportunity uh, work out for them that we can. Awesome. You know, one of the things we have said as alums and as fans is, uh, you know, Garrett Degnan, it's nice to actually see him score in different capacities not just as a time and room shooter you know he's cutting he's dodging and it's nice to see sort of a diversification of his scoring um and it's just fun to watch because you know it's, it's not like he's one dimensional sure um coach Kester, i like to say this personally i'm sure people will argue with me but i think hopkins traditionally is all about great defense i think of all the great defenders that we've had at hopkins i know it's your pride and joy Describe to us how we're playing as a defense. Um, for example, I talked to Coach Milliman the other day. The the whole concept, again, it's these podcasts have been like, oh, the old days versus the new days, right? So the, the slide quick and recover. Are we a slide quick and recover defense? Or are we a wait till the, we really think our teammate is beat defense? We're trying to be, yeah, we're trying to be week to a week to week defense. Uh, I think, um, and I, I'm sure guys that coach offense would say the same thing. Anytime you start to develop patterns, that's when you need to break that pattern. You don't want to develop things that are, are scoutable uh, to right. opponents. So I think some weeks it dictates that we slide a little bit more quickly and recover. And, and some weeks, you know, based off of what we're seeing offensively from the, from the other team, you, you need to be a little bit slower to go. Um, it's always easier to try to speed an offense up and slide a little bit more. Uh, but in the same, you know, almost in the same breath, like I think if it calls for the opportunity to be a little bit more patient with teams that like to move the ball, then you need to be able to do that. I Right now we're wildly inconsistent in staying out of the penalty box, right. wildly inconsistent in forcing teams to beat us six on six, the amount of, you know, transition, substitution, unsettled goals that we're giving up. So I think we're just trying to be a little bit more consistent across the board. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, you like takeaway defenders? I mean, who who, who would you uh, – or do you – I mean, you know, do you like a conservative defense? I call Tucker Durkin the big fundam fundamental. You like – Yeah, even – even yeah, I mean – Or do you let anyone go wild? Oh, man. I'm trying to think of how to answer that. So I was raised – you know where the school of defense that I came from where right. – um, any type of check resulted in you being thrown out of the locker room in the field for the week. So that was kind of how I was developed as a defenseman. Um, I think if you're playing and you're you're planning on not sliding and you're not helping each other, then you need to be more disciplined and you cannot be a takeaway defender. Okay. If you're playing a system where you're not afraid to support and slide and help each other, then I think you can allow your guys to take a little bit more risk on ball. And for me, it's always been like an earn type mentality. So if guys earn the right to be a little bit more active with their stick and they stay out of the penalty box, then I'll, then we will allow it. But if you're a guy that's in the penalty box, you know, swinging like you're at a six-year-old's pinata party, right. which we have some of those guys, you know, right. then that's, that's going to be a no-no. So right. we have what we call defensively a menu and there are very few guys that have checks on their menu. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And coach Kelly's not with us, but, uh, Give us a little summary about what we've come to know as the G unit. The G uh, unit or goal unit. Good group. Sure. They work well together. Yeah, well, I mean, let's just think about what Coach Kelly brings to the table. Like, he, yeah. he loves the program. He's passionate. He's got a lot of energy. He's a man of faith. Uh, and he's a family man. So I think that's that's what he brings to that group. And I have, right. you know, I don't want to speak for for the other coaches, but I've never seen a goalie group as close as, as what he's developed with those guys. I mean, they really act and, and sound and move around this place like, like they're one body. And it's been really impressive to see. Awesome. Awesome.
he has that he has them excited in 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 all situations and right. I'll, I'll give you one example we are pregame against Loyola um you know we as a team we kind of pride ourselves on on, on diving a shot out off the end line uh, we call it a DNA play something that we want to make sure that we're we're, we're a doing on a consistent basis and then show it in showing our teammates our commitment to like how hard we're going to play um and I, I you know I was I I was watching our pregame warm-up and all of a sudden a shot went off the end line and the four goalies stand at X like outside like off the field um and all of a sudden a shot goes uh by and one of the goalies who was out of the drill dives it out and then all of a sudden like a couple plays later like you know, the ball's moving. It's like a five on four drill in a pregame warm up. Another ball goes, another one of the goalies dives out. Um, and, you know, throughout that pregame warm up, all of a sudden you see two guys dive out. And like, I think that that's just like a small example and, and, and microcosm of like what I think Coach Kelly is doing a really good job of, of, of creating a bit of an identity for those guys um, to A, do what we do as a team, right? I right. think a lot of times goalies don't dive, dive shots out the same way a defenseman does. Right. Um, living our values as a team, but then um, as a group, uh, you know, they encourage each other, they challenge each other. Um, so I'll echo coaches, coaches sentiment. I mean, they, yeah. you know, they're clearly a tight knit group, but they also try to get the most out of each other. Yeah. I like the story you're telling, cause it also shows you that you're doing a drill with one goalie, but you're actually getting the other, you know, three or four goalies involved in the drill by yeah. chasing a missed shot, for example. And that was, and that was all them. That yeah. was, that yeah. had nothing to do with us telling them to do it. That was them right. like, fun excited for the game yeah. so it just it just goes to show what he's creating there good all right so we're moving on to michigan um that game is actually going to be at homewood right yeah sorry it's it, it's at homewood it's going to be on espn2 uh not just sort of espn plus but it'll be on espn2 at 12 p.m homewood field michigan john i'll start with you what are we looking for in the michigan game uh to you know thrive on offense um a couple of things that we're we're kind of trying to hone in on is is making sure that we're competitive every possession and selfless every possession okay. um and i know that that sounds super vague but we try to assign some actions with that um competitively uh we want to value the ball we want to work for really good shot opportunities and shoot competitively um and we want to win our matchup we want to dodge right. hard we want to get to the goal as best we can um in in whatever set that we're doing. Um, and then we want to play selflessly. We want to, you know, be able to move the ball. If we draw a slide, we want to make the, you know, make the okay shot turn into a great shot by keeping the ball moving. Um, and, and, and we want to cut and move off the ball for each other. Um, because at times, you know, just, just even watching Michigan, and this is kind of in general, um, the way that we move off the ball is going to dictate how we play when the ball is in our stick. Um, and also going to just create opportunities for us to dodge and get to a good spot. Um, right. So Michigan is, is is a very good defense. Um, they've been a they've been an excellent team all year, um, and it's going to be a challenge. They are they're good. They're good in the goal. Um, they're good at the short stick position. Um, they've got some defensemen who who uh, defensemen and LSMs who, who are long and rangy and 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 make some plays. Um, but overarchingly, you know, we have our X and O's and the schematic stuff. But at the end of the day, we we, we need to be uh, we need to be really competitive every possession, and we need to be as selfless as we can be. Um, and if we do that, I think that we can be in a good spot um, by awesome. doing those those kind of little things. Can I give you a one word answer question? Um, when you say offensive sets, approximately how many offensive sets do we have in you know in our pocket? Just in general, four or five. Okay. Four or five. We have one main set and then we have a couple other little things that, um, you know, if there's something specific we want to pick on um, that will kind of solidify where we're attacking from. Like if we want to attack from right. behind the goal, we have another set um, for that. That keeps it back there a little bit more. If we want to get out in in, in, in way more space, um, we have another set for for that. So um, all the kind of the principles of how we play is is consistent. You know, the yeah. way that we the way that we move off the ball, the way that we try to move the ball, um, the way that we try to dodge, all those things are consistent, but just in different shapes. Great. Understood. All right, Coach K, defensively, what are we looking at? What you know, what do we need to be careful about, mindful of with uh, the Wolverines of Michigan? Uh, I'll parallel what Coach Crawley said, just a, a very well-balanced team. I mean, very well coached. Uh, it really begins at the face-off X, which we were, you know, we alluded to earlier. They've got a great face-off guy. Their wings are super aggressive. They try to generate a lot of offense in the first 10 to 15 seconds. So trying to get to that six on six component. And then when they do get their personnel on the field, they're 
they're extremely balanced and they have great role players. I think they have guys out there that definitely complement each other very well. So just kind of identifying those and, and making sure that we take away the tendencies that we're seeing on film as best we can. And then, you know, the last component to what I think that I think they're doing really well this year is riding, you know, and if right. we're going to expect, you know, to put points up on the board, we got to get our offense the ball. So just making yeah. sure that, um, you know, we defend early, defend throughout the possession. And then once, you know, we get that stop, uh, making sure we get it over the 50 yard line and continue to push a little bit of transition, but more importantly, take care of the ball and get it to yeah. get it to the guys that need to have it. Understood. Understood. I, you know, this is the ninth vodcast. And I think in four of them, we talk about riding, you know, riding is just such a great part. Of, one, it's a great part of the game, but two, so vital. And uh, I told coach Milliman earlier back in our day, Thursdays were ride and clear day. I mean, it, you know, pra- practice structures are different now, but it's just like, Thursday was, okay, we're going to focus on rides and clears. And there's so many great teams out there that ride and get the ball back. So point well taken. That's something we need to look out for. And I'll tell you what, just in terms of our riding, what we did early on in the season was Coach K started to work with our attackmen, started to work with our offensive midfielders on how to approach the ball the same way a defender does and and how to, how to not wave for sticks, how to do that. Right. So, like, even on the flip side, like – it, it, it's a huge part of the game. Um, and, you know, we think that we hope that the way that we're doing it in practice um, and those guys kind of seeing on both sides of the ball, the importance of it, um, they, they, they see it vice versa when they're playing against the team. Awesome. All right. We're wrapping up and uh, I like to always make it a little lighthearted and fun towards the end. So, uh, you know, quick questions, rapid fire coach Crawley, you first, who's your favorite off ball player like who is the one player in your offense that you love watching when he doesn't have the ball on a stick uh jonathan peshko awesome canadian mentality you think is that way or just yeah i think he's just he's always looking for the ball um he's always looking to create uh you know he's not he's not just waiting for the ball to be in his stick to, to to be ready to dodge he's He's constantly looking for ways to to get himself open, to get other people open. Um, and you know, I you know, Coach K jokingly calls him Seven Eleven. I feel like he's always open. If we can find a way to um, keep that. keep our head up more consistently um, and and find him, I think we can be in a pretty good spot. But he he's constantly hunting things um, without the ball on his stick and 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 does a great job of it. Okay, great. And I'm going to deviate from sort of my list here. Questions: uh, Who is the best coach? <laughs> at giving out nicknames is it coach kester for sure that's not close yeah, yeah, yeah. you must have gotten some I inside love, information there huh yeah i love 7-eleven that's a great nickname great nickname i thought you All were right. going to ask me who my favorite offensive player was i thought that's where you're going with that well go ahead who's your favorite offensive player dylan bauer it's not even close yeah. uh i, mean, I love dill i love yeah yeah i mean he's super versatile Yep. Um, he gives us fits in practice like he makes us better he gets mismatches he's good at setting picks um Much. And the thing that I like about seven the most is, um, I mean, he goes hard every single day. Like it doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday morning in October or if it's the end of April on a Thursday, like the kid is going to give you the same type of juice every single day. Okay. I love it. Uh, I had a chance to talk to him at the smoker cause we're a big ski family and he's, you know, the pride of park city. So it was really great. And he, you know, this is a term we throw around a lot. He's like a glue guy. You know, he, like you said, he's a utility guy, like in baseball, he's a utility fielder. He can play any position Sometimes he gets to assist. Sometimes he gets that like goal that gets you sort of momentum running and, uh, and he's gritty, you know? All right. So coach K for you, we make a defensive stop. Let's say chase makes a save or we just get a ground ball defender who is running downfield that you do not want to shoot the ball. Scott Smith. (laughs) Okay. I thought you, were you grit your teeth. Like, please just pass the ball. Get the yeah, ball. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the answer the would be none of them. Shoot. Yeah. The answer would be none of them. But, but if I had to pick one, I would be 18. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see here. First player in the locker room. Most days. Coach Crawley. Scott Smith. Good answer. I was going to say chase. Okay. Scott Smith and Brett Martin, those two yeah. are kind of connected at the hip. Those two are always, always up here doing something actually. Yeah. I yeah. will say, uh, Daddy, we got a freshman too by the name of Forrest Ives who's who's injured right now, but the kid is – you'd think he worked in the building. I mean, he's right. up here all the time trying to grind and get 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 healthy again. It's been super impressive to see. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um. Okay. Funniest player on the team. Mm. Just want to see if the answers are different. I don't think any of our guys are funny. They think they're funny. Um, okay. um, I'm looking at our practice plan right now. I gotta, I gotta look at this. By the way, Coach Castor, so many weeks into the season, probably one of my favorite videos of the season is you running on the Homewood Field the first day of practice. Yeah, and uh, our great videographer. I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, Grayson, Grayson Johns. Grayson. Yeah. She's she's amazing. She really is. You know, she's playing that song at last, and it's you kissing the turf, and yeah, it's my favorite video of the whole season. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens every day. It's just it started as a habit, to be honest yeah. with you. When I came back here as a volunteer in 2011, I started just running into the field and and touching the X, which is where I spent the majority of my time. Right, right. As a, as a player and a, and, a, and a volunteer. Yeah. Um, and that just kind of continued no matter where I was. And certainly, you know, just the appreciation for having a time on Homewood Field is yeah. kind of where that came from. Yeah. All right. So, Carl, who's the funniest? Come on. Think about it. I'll tell you who's not the funniest. Bo okay. Zuluk <laughs> Bo is not the funniest. Okay, good. That's um, good. That's, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. We and always then, like we always like to put a little bit of roasting in this vi vi yeah, podcast. You know? Yeah, yeah, that one that one's for sure. I'd say S Stu Phillips is pretty funny at times, um, and then I feel like they all just kind of like chirp each other. And yeah. I don't know if we all understand. Yeah. Folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt Collison is a funny kid, and I don't know if it's necessarily like on purpose, but just some of his mannerisms and his his logic and the way that he processes things. Like we we usually have a good chuckle when he's around. Yeah. Okay, finishing up with a uh, a few more here. So, favorite Hopkins tradition. By the way, I you know I don't need to say this, but I forgot to say. I mean, we're talking you know to the two Blue Jays, you know, a two time national champion, a two time captain, All Americans. We love the fact that we have some blue. You know, the Blue Jays are on staff. But what's your favorite Hopkins tradition? I feel like every time I'm asked this, I say something different. So I don't know if I could like iron it out entirely. Um, I, I love the song after a win. Yeah. That's, you know, I, that's a great one. And we didn't do that. That's kind of new. Like, I love that. I love that they do the song after a win. Yeah. I, I would agree with coach Crawley for two reasons. One is um, you see the exuberance and the joy that the guys have. Right. And it's like that strong sense of camaraderie and you don't sing it unless you win. Right. So I think, I think for both of those reasons, I would, I would agree with coach Crawley. All right. Coach K I'm really kind of disappointed because I was kind of feeding you into Skyball. I thought everyone was going to say Skyball. I have to talk about Skyball. Yeah. The go late, ahead. great, the late, great Freddie Smith, yep. whose picture hangs in Cordes center and, you know, got into the U S uh, coaches hall of fame as an assistant um had that tradition yeah top stand you know top of the stands sky yeah. ball i love instagram because the best part of it is seeing coach k laughing yeah who, so, who, um, so let me ask quickly yeah. who is the best at sky ball player well so the best to me is like someone that goes out there and doesn't really know what they're doing and, and drops the pass is that what you're looking for you're looking for somebody who catches it every time all right, let's get both. Who's the worst and who's the best? No, uh, Brett Martin's the best. He's going to catch it every single time. He could do it blindfolded. The worst is a kid by the name of Andrew Bigelow. He's yeah. couldn't catch a beach ball. Um, but it's actually funny. Uh, Clubber um, sent Coach Kelly an email last year, um, just kind of like explaining the genesis and where it came from. Like he gave a very detailed explanation, yeah. like everything that you had just mentioned. And it was really cool to post that. So all of the guys kind of understood, like, it's not just like a mess around thing at, on a Friday walkthrough. Like there's right. a real lineage and a right. purpose to why we're doing it. So it was, well, I was grateful for that email and it was really cool for our guys. Yeah, it is. It is. And by the way, sorry, I, I also like to throw alums under the bus. Greg Clubber Lilly was a teammate of mine and a roommate. Um, yeah. We used, we used to actually joke. We still joke today at 57 years of age. You never wanted to throw a cross field pass to Clubber. All American, but you never want you you gritted your teeth when you threw a cross field pass to Clubber. Yeah. And, and he did not thrive in Skyball. <laughs> um, but it's just a great, it's a great tradition. And I know all the offensive guys would be shooting with Coach Zim and we're like, God, I wish we could do Skyball with the defensive. Yeah. It's it's an ideal setting on Homewood because there's no track. 
right, right, right. The field. so like the stands are right on top of the field so it's like an ideal setting the yeah. the issue is really when we're on the road you know yeah. when we're on, a, we're on another field that doesn't really you you wouldn't imagine some of the lengths that we've gone to to try to replicate yeah. that you know on a visiting field yeah all right so two last things uh coach we'd be remiss if we didn't say congratulations to you on your engagement to Thank a you. blue jay miranda yep yep appreciate it better lacrosse player than you or for sure okay for, definitely better hands than yeah. I. that's for it's, sure. an, it's awesome and we want to say congratulations to you we um, also wanted to say this uh because i failed to to do it in the last uh podcast because the news had just come out but jen baker our athletic director uh was uh nominated as one of the ad's of the year athletic directors and i know you guys know this we have an incredible athletics program at hopkins we're a division one sport at a division three school and those programs have all thrived and done very, very well. I'm a big fan of the cross country program and basketball has thrived. Women's soccer, the women's sports have been great football. Women, women's volleyball and women's volleyball and women's field hockey have been yeah. extremely successful. Yeah. So congratulations to uh, our, our fearless leader, Jen Baker on athletic director of the year. All right, fellas, thank you for your time. I hope this was fun for you. It's fun for us. We play Michigan Saturday at noon, Homewood Field. Hopefully the band shows up. Where's the pet band been? Um, and uh, good luck to you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us on. All right. Daddy, thank you.